Welcome to Strange and Scary Story Talk. I'm Heather Nani, and tonight we're talking about Marganita Lasky's The Tower. The Tower was written in 1955. Lasky is a, was a British journalist, novelist, literary critic. Um, she passed away in 1988, and I want to stop here and ask that if you haven't read the story, to turn this off, go read it, and come back to us, because this is perhaps one of the best scary story written, scary stories written ever. And I think it's great that we're talking about it on the night before Halloween, Devil's Night, Mischief Night, whatever you want to call it. So let's dive in immediately. The story is about Caroline, who is the wife of um, Neville, who is a member of the British Council working, she's from, they're from England, he's working in Italy. Okay, we find her in the beginning driving through the hillside of Tuscany, very proud of herself because apparently her husband um, has been at her to go see, not the tourist traps, but he wants her to go see the real Tuscany. And you get the sense that he's kind of disappointed that she hasn't done this, so she's proud because she's gotten in a car and she's driven on the right instead of the left side of the road. Anyway. She's about ready to go home, and then she sees that on the map that up ahead is the Tower of Sacrifice. And she looks in the Italian guidebook, she understands the Tower of Sacrifice was, um, I don't know, the village where the Tower of Sacrifice is was destroyed in like 1549, but because of superstition they let the tower stand. It's 470 steps. She notices it was built by a Niccolo di Ferramano, and she realizes, like, oh, that name rings a bell. She thinks back to a time when her husband took her to some castle to see some artwork, and he was explaining the art, and she turned around, and she sees a portrait of a beautiful young girl, um, also the last name de Ferramano, and she's got brown eyes and um, honey hair and... Then she looks next to the portrait and it's of this very creepy looking man with a long, thin white face and black eyes and he's leaning on these books and there's some gold script on the books that she doesn't know because it's not in English nor is it in Italian. It's not the alphabet that we use. Anyway, her husband explains that um, that's Niccolo de Ferramano, the one that erected the tower and the girl next to him was his wife. Apparently she was either lost or damned and that underneath the portrait of the Niccolo it says an unnamed gentleman because the family cannot stand him and does not want his name mentioned. Anyway, um, Neville says, oh, that writing is in either Arabic or Hebrew and he clearly was a practitioner of witchcraft and he's a bad person, and that's the end. So Caroline makes that association, and she thinks, oh, I'm gonna go see this, and then Neville's gonna be so proud of me. Now, if anyone's seen Midnight in Paris, and you remember the character, I think it's Michael Sheehan, that plays the pedantic man that goes to the museum and knows about everything, that's Neville. Although I would imagine less charming. So Caroline wants to impress her new husband. She drives to the tower, by herself. At this point she has just a little bit of time and the sun is starting to set and at one point she says to herself, I should turn back and go back to Florence for safety. And she was shocked by this voice within her. She didn't know where it came from that said to her, for safety. But she has to impress Neville. So she says, no, no, no. And she goes to the tower and she goes inside. Now you gotta think of this as a modern person. You know, who goes into a tower, a tourist trap set by yourself as the sun is setting? But she does it. And it's believable the way it's written. She goes inside and she starts, she says, you know, there's the, she's in this round room because it's a tower. And then you go through the ceiling, there's a little hole. And then, you know, the stairwell goes up to the top of the tower where she thinks she could come out and see this gorgeous view. So she starts to climb the stairs and the way she describes it, are you ready? There's the brick wall on the right, okay? And then on the left, there ain't nothing 
but a rusty rail that she needs to hold out, hold on to. So as she's walking up the stairs, everything down below is black and there's a rusty rail. And she's getting nervous. And there's a voice in her head that's saying, turn back, but she doesn't. And she keeps walking up these stairs. And at one point, her hand, there's no more rail. Okay, so there is a pit down below that she can fall into and this wall and the sun is setting because up above it's the top of the tower so Lasky takes us through and if you have vertigo or if you have a fear of heights even talking about it makes my palms sweat the way it's written is so brilliant you're feeling this walk in this dark tower where there is a drop down below and there's a woman all by herself and night is falling. So she continues to go up and up and up. And she's kind of holding onto the wall. And at one point she gets to the 470th step and she's like, there's nothing. There's still something up above, but there's no more steps. Then she feels and there's a door. So she steps out and there's like a platform. And she goes out and she panics. And then this voice comes to her, you've got to jump, jump. It's the only way down, jump. And she's like, no, 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 that's crazy. I'm experiencing, this is vertigo. I've never had vertigo, but I feel this, is, this has gotta be vertigo. So she goes back in, and now this woman can't walk. She can't move. Also, when she got outside of the tower, she realized this is much, this can't be this high. I can't be this high at 470 steps. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so she goes back in. So now she knows how high she is. And there's this voice, you've got to jump. You've got to jump. But she doesn't want to die. She doesn't want to jump. So she's telling herself it's vertigo and she's like, she sits down. She's like, okay, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna scooch down. So she does that a little bit. And then she stands up and for much of it, there's no rail. At one point she looks over and it's a black and bottomless pit below. She holds onto the wall. It says that her hands are bloody from scraping against the, the brick wall. Something slaps her in the face and she can, says, oh, it's a bat, it's a bat. Okay, so this is what happens at the end of the story. This poor woman makes it down, holding onto the wall. Now remember, it's 470 steps. The last few words of the story are, 530, 31, 2, 3. And it gives me goosebumps because she's trapped in this tower of sacrifice that, I mean, she's doomed that this Niccolo di Fermano built. So, that story. And what's brilliant about the story is the pacing of it. The beginning, the couple of pages in the beginning, you're not quite sure where it's going, but I've never read anything that can really connect to a reader so well where you're the visceral experience of this woman walking up and the fear and then coming down is so strong. And although the first just couple of pages are a little bit slow, once she starts walking up those steps, the terror when she gets to the top, then as she's coming down, and the absolute horror when you realize she's past 470 steps and you know this lady's descending into hell or whatever, and nobody knows she's there, and nobody's gonna come and rescue her. Now, I don't have a lot of patience for like over analysis of stories, but I have seen where some have said, well, the tower is a phallus and there's some sort of symbolism regarding, you know, the men's domination over the male domination over the female. And I have to say, looking at the story and how quick, fast, quickly paced it is from the time she gets in the tower and walks up and walks down, and the time that Lasky spends in the beginning talking about Caroline's relationship with the annoying Neville, and you know that poor Giovanna is dead, the young bride of this Niccolo who built this tower. You know what, I think that's probably an accurate analysis. The actual building itself, the description, is clearly, it's, it's a, appears to be a phallic symbol. And when you think about Caroline, 
she's doing this to impress or compete with whatever there's an influence of the husband upon her to do this to go up and come down and go in this tower by herself but anyway you have to read the story i'm shocked that most of us in the states don't know margarita lasky and that this story isn't as popular in high school and, and college english classes as shirley jackson's the lottery is because it's so good so go read it and please tell me what you think about this story um, tell me if you think it's as good as I think it is. Tell me your experience reading it and please share with me the interpretation. Do you think there's something more to interpret from it than just an evil tower created by an evil guy? So um, if you like this episode, please subscribe and also leave your comments. I can't wait to hear from you. Until next time, thank you.